I'll be briefly talking to you about Noah's Ark in this short video. Um, this is just the topics that I preach about when I go to preach uh, three times a week in Australia. And as you can see here, Noah's Ark is a one hour topic, uh, but I'm trying to fit it into the 10 minute uh, time gap. Mount Ararat, belonging to Armenia, no more Christians. Mount Ararat in Armenia, should edit that picture actually. Over here we've got a longevity, post-flood longevity chart, and it's got the ages of the prophets mentioned in the Bible. Um, a lot of people say, hey, you know, they didn't live to 930 years back then, they counted each year as a month. That's not true, because the Hebrew calendar back then, about 4,000, 6,000, anywhere from four to 6,000 years ago, was approximately one year today. So b people did live to over 900 years before the flood. After the flood, there's a dram dr dramatic dec decrease in the ages. Um, as you can see, bottom left-hand corner, declining post-flood longevity, dramatic decrease in age. That's after the flood. But I won't go into detail about that. That's a more scientific explanation to why that happened, and that's in a different section when I preach. And that's it's, it's a lot longer and more complicated, so I won't go into that. But yeah, as you can see there, Noah was about lived to about 950 years. You can see the time frame where the flood happened with the 120 year warning. These are anchor stones. Anchor stones uh, have been used in ancient ships to balance the ship in wave big big seas. Uh, you, they were found in nearly every, any, any big ancient ship would have carried anchor stones, about 12 on each side. Um, they would have been from about on, on the bigger ones, they would be from your foot to about your knee. That was one of the bigger ones that they found in ancient times. But obviously here, these anchor stones, they're designed for a bigger, bigger ship. Um, if you can see Armenian crosses there. A lot of American tourists, when they come to see this, very ignorant. These are Armenian crosses. The Turks just tell them lies and they believe it. They say they're ancient Christians. The Crusaders came and eventually figured it out. Now, that man... Uh, is an American tourist standing next to the uh, anchor stone. The mountain behind him is just the beginning of Mount Ararat. So Mount Ararat is just to the uh, back left of him. And that's the valley. And the valley is called the Valley of Eight. The Armenians named that. It is still called, the Turks still do call it the Valley of Eight. And the Armenians named that place. It's been known as the Valley of the Eight for the past hundreds of years they they've have it on records but anyway but as you can see here Armenians knew straight away when they saw these anchor stones that this was the definitely Noah's Ark Armenians straight away knew what this structure was and even on the larger structure that I'll show you next there's Armenian Armenian crosses all over the thing as you can see here bigger structure this is petrified wood it's not rock They've done scientific testing on it. Atheists, skeptics have gone and spent thousands of dollars just to try to disprove that this is not wood, but it's turned out to be wood. All right, They've gone and done their own scientific testing on it. reason why this is not out in the media these days, it's because it's isolated and also because the media has certain powers. They don't want to release this. They know if they release this, the whole evolution theory has just gone down the drain. This proves God. You know, it's just not good. It's, it's a bit more complicated. I talk more about why the media doesn't release this in when I talk about this topic for an hour, but I'm trying to fit this in 10 minutes. That is a huge wooden structure. Yes, it's unbelievable. What's it doing in the middle of nowhere? Huge wooden structure. It's obviously Noah's Ark. Bottom uh, right hand corner, you can see they're doing scanning. They've laid out huge uh, sensors all over the structure and they're scanning what's underneath. Satellite image showing clearly that this is a boat, huge ship, no question about it. In the Bible, God told Noah to build the ark 300 cubits long. Well, guess what? They measured it and it is 299.6 Egyptian cubits long. Coincidence? I don't think so. Average width, 50 cubits long in the Bible. Hey, they measured it and it came up as 49.88 Egyptian cubits. All these measurements here, compare it to the measurements in the Bible, the dimension in the Bible, and they are pretty accurate. You know, this, this alone here, the measurements, 
proves straight away that this is Noah's Ark. Doesn't matter if it was made out of rock. With these measurements, it proves straight away that it's Noah's Ark. Rib timbers. You can see the different timbers, rib timbers sticking out from underneath the ground. Um, I got no fighting further more to say. This is really just timber. Another long shot of the Ark. Over here we've got what's buried underneath, a little diagram after they scanned it. You can see the rib timbers, deck joists, and deck support timbers. The deck support timbers, you can see they're sticking out from underneath the structure. And the rib timbers as well, very clearly, they're just, they're just there, they're exposed, you know. Uh, main bulkheads of the first deck level of the arc as revealed by subsurface interface radar scanning. So they've radar scanned it and they've seen the bulkheads, all the all the structures, all the, the blueprints. This is they've just pretty much given you the blueprints after scanning the structure. Um, anchor stone. Further radar scanning shows they're determining exactly what's underneath. And you've got a cross section of a piece of the timber pulled off the arc. That is petrified timber. You can see the wood grains there. You cannot you cannot say no to that. That's evidence right in your face. And then we've got on the bottom left hand corner a huge slab of um, timber that's broken off just next to the ark and obviously if you can see there are Armenian crosses on it. Sample of petrified structure of Noah's Ark as you can see there they've pulled the mirror of it from the ark and it's a piece of wood. This is further proof that this is a huge ship because you've got fossilized rivets all over the structure. They've pulled this all over the structure. These fossilized rivets were used to bolt all the timbers together and they're used in ancient ships as well. There you go, fossilized rivets. Another bit of the um, timber, uh, very clear, it's just a, it's a bit of timber, petrified timber. Now over here we've got chemical compositions, over back here we've got chemical compositions, I won't go into detail because of the 10 minute limit. And here we've got a artist's impression of what it would have looked like. I don't know if it really looked like that, but um, could have done. I'm not sure, but it's very intelligent design. And that's the Turkish Visitors Information Center. The Turks make $270 million a year on visitors coming to see the Ark, most of the Americans. There is a hotel down the road, and all of this is in the Armenia, Turkish Armenia military zone, which they're not technically supposed to be building civilian stuff here. Visit, they're not supposed to be bringing tourists in the Turkish Armenia military zone, because this is very close to the border. Finding Noah's Ark disproves evolution, full stop, no question about it. Noah's Ark has been found. And when they do further excavations on it, they will not try to prove that it is an ark because it's already been proven as the ark. They just want to learn more about how it was built. The Armenians knew about this thousands of years before the Turks found this. The Turks found this structure using a satellite. They went over it with a satellite. They saw it. Hey, they made some good money over it, but we can't do anything about it. It's technically their land. And yeah, it just further. You can't evolution. This is going to turn the evolution theory upside down. That's why people do not want this to be released. Again, it's a very complicated discussion. I won't go into detail, but that's pretty much it. If you want any more information, just email me and I'll give you more information. Again, this is an hour talk. I did it in 10 minutes. If you listen to me on an hour on this, you definitely walk out, you know, believing, because there's a lot more proof that I would have talked about. It's very short. Thanks for listening.